since the presentation is, is, uh, is long and I'm afraid you guys are going to sleep, I'm going to walk around the room so checking that you don't sleep and I'm going to pick on some of you. So you better, Luis, be, be careful. I'm, I'm watching your back. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to present in front of you. Uh, this presentation was supposed to be done by my CEO, like the speech. He's an engineer, I'm a humble economist, so uh, please, you know, my IQ is a little bit different than his, so I'll, I'll, some slides are quite difficult, so I'll try to go fast, as fast as possible, but accept this. Well, uh, so basically, if you have to leave today and say, what did Stefano say today? It's two major points, which is, uh, Post Italiana in the past nine years did a turnaround, uh, and uh, this turnaround was possible due to two major things, which is innovation and integration, and they go hand in hand. So, what I'm going to do at first, I'm going to present a little bit our strategy and then our financial results. So, it's a little bit inverted as normally people introduce. So, as soon as our CEO uh, joined the company nine years ago, what he did, the first thing he did, he set up uh, a new mission, and if, if you had to do like uh, the movie Beautiful Mind, you, you know when there is all those articles and he sees one word, one word there and there highlighted. If you had to see this slide, I would highlight the word value-added services. And to do this, he put a strategy of investing heavily in ICT, so a lot of providers around here are very happy because this was a, a major investment, uh, several billion euros of investments in ICT. So innovation, like Belgium, Denmark, and Swiss Post, and uh, a lot of our colleagues, we invested a lot to innovate our uh, postal business, to uh, streamline our postal business, and also to introduce new services. And uh, you know, this is an important point. He's uh, he used to our CEO uh, used to work in telecom industry and all the top management came from telecom. So for them, it was very important to push into new services and to see how new services could uh, help in uh, the, the risk of decreasing volumes and stagnant volumes. So nine years ago, this picture was not that clear, uh, but as, as, as you saw the presentations in the morning, the volumes started to go down. First of all, because of e-substitution, but also because competition has risen. Uh, for example, TNT Post, uh, the Italian market is a major market. Swiss Post is, uh, thinks Italy is one of the major markets for them. So both e-substitution and competition, because this is uh, something that we, we have to keep in mind. What we had to do, and you know, this is going to be relative motive of my presentation is the word integration. We, my CEO Massimo Sarmi believes that we have several assets and we have to integrate these assets. This was the major thing we did. We did first the integration of our subsidiary in the parcels, we did the integration. There are still subsidiaries, but the platforms we developed together uh, were integrated. And we went even a, f a further step. So recently, we started integrating also with our UPS partner, because we're using UPS for international and also for certain uh, services nationally. So we started first to integrate our assets, domestic assets, and then move further and further to integrate also with our partners. This is the difficult slide, it's digital communication. It's, what is important is that uh, we believe that, first of all, we are not anymore in the mail business, we're in the communication business. And this is one of the reasons you're going to see later that we moved into the mobile telephony, we moved into uh, um, digital communication. So more and more, we, we are making an offer which uh, goes from physical to hybrid to digital and to um, and, and, and link this into a common platform. And so, the, as I told you, the buzzword is integration. Complete offer to our customer, but an integrated offer. The next one is even harder. 
it's payment. So one of the pillar, if you do an integrated strategy, uh, is how you're going to get your customers to pay, both the retail and uh, small, medium, and uh, large customers. So uh, it was very important to integrate the collection and the payments, and more and more we have invested uh, in creating a payment service hub. So, uh, for example, you're going to see we launch uh, prepaid cards, which has been very successful. We have seven million prepaid cards. We have six million credit and debit cards. And, uh, and this is, is pushing our, uh, the whole card business for us is around 15 million cards. And this is, is quite important. For example, in the prepaid card, it was very big success with young people and with immigrants, which uh, use the prepaid card as a way to have an account without having an account. Then we continued our diversification by saying, OK, what do our customers want? How, how do they perceive us? So what's the brand recognition? And they, they perceive us as a safe uh, institution, an institution which uh, does not invest in risky things. So we thought there was an opportunity seven years ago to launch our insurance business. And what we did, we are now the biggest player with new customers, and we have 10% market share of the life insurance in Italy. Then last year, uh, on March 25th, we launched also non-life insurance, and this is picking up dramatically. This, when you, when you do a diversification strategy, you just don't diversify, at least this is our philosophy, you just don't diversify just for the heck of, of putting your eggs in other baskets. But you follow your customers. What do your customers feel? How do your customers perceive you? And if they perceive you in a way where there is a market niche for you, then you should go into that. This is how our perception. So what we did nine, nine, ten years ago, we introduced priority mail, we improved the quality of mail, then so the brand increased. Then we introduced more and more financial services, people felt comfortable with us. We introduced insurance, now non-life insurance uh, products. Then this is what my CEO really likes. He launched in November 2007 a new mobile operator, a mobile virtual operator. So what we do, in fact, we partner with Vodafone. We buy large chunks of minutes of communications from Vodafone. We repackage them and we uh, resell it. But we did one thing more. The SIM card is also linked to payment uh, instruments. So Linked to the, your SIM card, there is a, a prepaid card or is linked to your account or to a debit card. So what normally, for example, uh, mobile virtual operators in, in the UK or in the US like Virgin, what they do, they, they, they tackle uh, the niche of younger people and they put you know, music, uh, cheap prices and certain, uh, let's say for uh, teenagers, services for teenagers. We did the opposite. We did, instead of doing a war on prices, we, we added value added services. And this allowed us to have 2.3 million new customers. And Italy is the most saturated market there is for mobile 120% penetration. Everybody has a phone, uh, it's, it's fashionable. Uh, you, we pay for phones. Like other countries, they don't pay for phones. For us, it's pretty cool to have a good phone. You know, we are fashionably conscious. Don't look at me and dress badly. But, uh, but normally, this is the, the, the... So it became successful and also allowed us to do some cross-selling on our financial services. Integration, as I told you, is we, we decided to integrate because our customer asked us to do the integration. Uh, logistic, financial, insurance, post and mobile, and, and I added the international because it's my type of business. We did a multi-channel supply platform, so a big thing for us is to have a common platform because with a common platform you can service your customers and, and help also your sales force to act in a united way. A, a common platform doesn't mean that you uh, do 
uh, only one way communication with your customer. In fact, the common platform allows you to have a multi-channel access. And this is important. People have to feel comfortable. They can call your call center. They can use their mobile to contact you. They can use ATM, kiosk, or through the postman, palm tops, or to your traditional post office. Then we started uh, two years ago to move internationally. And our strategy is not to acquire internationally. It's not to develop uh, companies internationally, but it's to partner. So we, we partner with Russia Post, and we're working on uh, restructuring their post office network and their logistics. We're partnering with Egypt Post, with Saudi Post uh, uh, on electronic email, Albania Post with digital signature. And the India Post, this is interesting, uh, we won with HSBC a bid for their prepaid card business. And just for your information, the prepaid card business is expected to be 20 million cards per year in India. Then I added, which is very important because it's our most recent agreement, is with Cyclion. And Aryan is going to pay me coffee today for, for this uh, advertisement. Uh, we're doing uh, Amazon, just launched the Amazon.it website. And with, through Cyclion, we're doing return logistics. Uh, hopefully, the next two will be, one will be Croatia, which we are about to, to close the agreement, and our colleagues are around, uh, are here, and uh, hopefully also Brazil. We have been negotiating. There has been some changes in the top management of Brazilian Post, Correio, uh, but things have, uh, are, are about to, to set. So as I told you, this was our strategy, and these are our, our results. In 203, 54% of our business came from logistics and postal services, 46 from financial. Now what happened, the postal logistics is 39, and new services are 14%. New services are digital, but also like uh, innovative financial services like prepaid cards. So we, we have diversified, as I said, but also uh, the cake has grown. So. Uh, um, this has been important, but as we see more and more postal uh, services are going to have an impact on us. We had, we tripled our revenues. It's important, the big jump between 203 and 204 was because uh, international accounting standards change how you account for new policies which have been uh, uh, insurance policies. Uh, and uh, most we, in the past uh, nine years, we went from losing money to making a net profit of one billion. Uh, for your information, in 1998, we were losing 1.5 billion euros. So uh, we were, let's say, up to 201, 202, probably the, most, the worst company in the country. Nobody wanted to work with us. Well, customers didn't like us. We had really bad quality. So this is the, the story. Thank you very much.